streaming live sports event today. Stream thousands of live and on-demand sporting events from any device. Click link in description box down below to watch full game in high quality. Don't forget to like and subscribe this channel for more sports updates. Thanks for watching and enjoy the game.
a nice turnout, ain't it, folks? We ain't big, but we are a proud little community. As old as the country itself, now that's something to be proud of. 200 years old, now that's something really worth celebrating. And the man who founded this little speck of earth should be congratulated. We're proud of him. And we want to thank him with this celebration and remember him because he's done good for all of us. Here we are, like a big, happy family. Many of us have our roots here. Most of us, come to think of it. <laughs> oh, I know, we've had our little fights, disagreement now and then, but as we all know, time heals all wounds. Now, I have a special surprise for everyone. All right, boys, roll it out. Roll it right out there. That's clear away there. Let's boys, roll it out. That's fine, that's fine. This is a gift to all of us, all the way from England, from the estate of Ephraim Ludlow III, the deceased great-grandson of that same man who founded our little community exactly two hundred years ago. All right, boys, take it off. I don't want to get too close to that thing. It's quite beautiful, but I wonder what they're going to do with it. I don't know, but I'm sure the hell I'm going to photograph it. All right, folks, hold it down. Hold it down. Tonight, folks, during our closing services and giving thanks, we will listen to a demonstration of this beautiful instrument. It will be placed in our town hall for everybody to enjoy. I wonder how much this is worth. Oh, plenty. It looks like real gold. Come here. Let's disappear. Are you crazy? Someone will see us. Okay. Later then. I promise. Okay. Later. A lot of unexplained things happened in Ludlow. It has a colorful history, but it's cold and unfriendly, and as you can see, decaying. A family by the name of Brubaker lived here. They were plagued by one strange accident after another. Mrs. Brubaker, the last one to survive, committed suicide by thrusting a knife into her stomach. And there's one heck of a story here. And grant us your blessing this day as we observe the 200th birthday of our community. In so doing, we ask you to forgive us all of our past transgressions and to renew our faith in you. There are many things we would like to forget, but we must always remember that your divine guidance has steered us through the darkness of those bad times. And we place ourselves and our future in your hands. Amen. And now, to highlight this wonderful occasion, Mrs. Ann Schultz, is going to honor us by playing this beautiful instrument, eh? Are you ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Let's go.
pitch black in here. Hang on a minute. I'll take care of it. Here, hold this. Andy, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. I love you. I have a surprise for you when you come up. I haven't said a word since we left the town hall. That old harmonium, it was here before in Ludlow. It was just returned. Why didn't the mayor mention it? How do you know? I was born and raised here <laughs> until we moved. My grandfather was an avid storyteller. You sure had me fooled. You've got city written all over you. <laughs> so you must know most everybody there then. Oh, I do. But they don't know me. I was only nine when we moved. You don't act much older now. Thanks. Come on, throw a couple bucks on the table. We got a lot of work to do. Winnie. Coming up? Yes, dear. I'll be right up.
actress. You frightened me. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, I'm going out for a minute. Where are you going? Yeah, just over to the hall. I, I, uh, I think I left my keys in the lock. Yeah, I'll just be a minute, all right? I'll be in bed, dear. Try not to kill that bottle before I get back, all right? <laughs> Chris? Chris, are you back? Chris, will you answer me? What's going on? Oh, nothing, dear. I'm coming right up. I swear I thought I heard you come in earlier. I don't understand. What's going on? Ludlow, population 47. Farming, industry, tourism unincorporated. That's it. Yeah, but why now? I mean, don't you find Debbie, it a little Debbie, you have always been a very curious young lady. And the fact of the matter is, I don't have the answers. I don't have the answers. I'm looking for some historical data. Do you know where I can find any information like that? Sorry, Deborah. Everything this town had burned up when we lost our town church. You must have heard about that fire from your ma or your grandpa. Besides, we've had our share of trouble. Why bring it up? Yeah, I remember stories Grandpa used to tell me. About the piano. Um, the one from the Ludlow estate. That was here before. I'm sorry, Deborah. I've got to go. you to get all bent out of shape about this, but maybe we ought to get rid of it. Bullshit. Don't you start giving me that superstition garbage, too. I've got other problems. Have you any idea why the Harpers left and Dan Willard was going to move, too? I don't know, and I don't care. But you know damn well we've got no jobs no more. Westchester's getting all the business. 
Why do you think I'm working so hard trying to keep this community alive? Get too damn many old people and nothing to attract the young. Speaking of the young, Eleanor Peterson and Andy Koch ran away together. Gone. Poof. Can't say I blame them with parents like that. Now, what are you going to do about that? Nothing. Nothing. There's a law against that, you know. Wrong. Andy's 18 and tomorrow's Eleanor's birthday. And do me a favor, Chris. In your sermons, watch what you say. There's no need for reminders. Remember, it's our 200th birthday. Whatever happened was a long time ago. I'll give that some serious thought, Sam. See you later. Frightened me. Um, I'm, I'm sorry about the picture. Oh, I didn't mean to. The door was ajar. I was sure I'd locked it last night. Which is strange, too, because I seldom lock our community hall. Wait a minute. I know you. Deborah, isn't it? <laughs> what brings you back to Ludlow? Uh, my job, I suppose. But without it, I would have visited anyway. Um, I really am sorry about the picture. I, I didn't even touch it. I was, I was standing over there when... It's all right. 
I can fix that, no problem. Um, you mentioned a job. What do you do? I'm a writer. Not infamous yet, but maybe someday. Reverend. Yes, go on. This piano. It was here before in Ludlow, right? I don't know what you mean, Deborah. I think you do. Please remember, I was born and raised here. My parents are from here, and their parents. And I remember a lot of the stories that Grandpa used to tell, so why won't anyone give me an honest answer on this question? Well, I wouldn't know about that. But it's, it's common knowledge among the older folks that this same instrument was here with Ephraim Ludlow, our founding father. Why do you ask? Curiosity. From the few bits and pieces that I can remember from the stories that Grandpa used to tell me, they sounded interesting enough to... Well, I'd be the wrong person to ask. I mean, I'm not that much older than you are. But I'm sure that some of our old-timers could help you out. I really don't know very much about it. Yeah, I guess you're right. Again, I'm sorry about the accident. I'll see you again sometime. Oh, that'll be nice. spending entirely too much time in your room again. Why? Emily, answer me, please. You are purposely making yourself disgusting. How long can we go on like this? At least answer me. Stop it! Stop it right now! How many times have we been through this before? You've got to try to help yourself. Please. Yes, Mother. But my dolls. Your dolls? Your dolls will be just fine. I'm going out for a while.
Now hold still. I have tried to make you pretty. And you repay me with bad behavior. You were always like that. That's why your name is Isabel. I wouldn't want to have to punish you. Okay. Who laughed? I heard someone laughing at me. I demand to know who it was. Was it you? Or you, Shen? Maybe it was Abigail. It was, wasn't it, Abigail? I have tried to make you the prettiest one of them all. Now you laugh at me. Company. We have company. Mama's going to take you to a party. Maybe we can all go. If you're good. Except Abigail. So we can adore you. What a lovely child. Does she speak? Does she walk? Who's the father? Young. Yes. So very young. She's mine. She's mine. Touch her and I'll kill you. practicing before Sunday. You know, I love the sound. It doesn't bother you? The fact that it's, you know. The original Ludlow? 
No. I'm surprised at you. After all, this is the 20th century we're living in. Mm -hmm. Good night. Be careful. Writer, you sure don't do much writing. First, you've got to get the facts, Winnie. Don't call me Winnie. Sorry. The history of New England towns. Listen to this. Ludlow, population 47, one of the earliest settlements. Tourism, unincorporated, farming, industry. That's it. God, I can't believe this. Believe what? Every other town in this book, there's a wealth of information on, but not Ludlow. So what's the big deal? Why is that so important? Well, I'm not so sure. You know, at first I thought I was just in this for myself. You know, kind of a root syndrome. But it's more than that now. I don't know. I could tell you stories from when I was a kid that would raise the hackles on your back. And they're not just stories. That's, that's history. So why isn't it recorded anywhere? Maybe you haven't looked in the right places. Yeah, maybe. But I will. Have you noticed that people are moving away from Ludlow kind of sudden? And that celebration sure had a forced atmosphere. Around here, nothing's much livelier. Oh. Sure is pretty. Mm. The piano. Oh. The piano that no one will talk about. So what's to talk about? Uh, I don't know, I'm telling you, that's the key to something, Winnie. Founding Father Ludlow, from what I've heard, was not a giver. He was exiled, from what I can remember. Not from England, like many of our forefathers were, but from this country back to the old country. And he swore to get even. Even? What did they do to him? That's what I'm trying to find out, Winnie. When, I mean... Okay, sister. Don't call me sister. And don't call me Winnie. Look, as long as we're working on developing things, try it on a sense of humor. <laughs> the Westchester City Council will meet tomorrow night with the Ludlow Centennial, the top item on the agenda. City snow removal will also be discussed with the removal and transportation of this winter's devastating accumulation. Also on the agenda are problems with garbage removal in Westchester, with a landfill site near Ludlow opposed by many of the city's councilmen. More snow on the way. Westchester Ludlow weather is next. Once again, the Westchester Ludlow... And you know how sorry we all are this dreadful thing happened. You know, it was quite a shock to you. We're here today to pay respects to Emily and to Sam, don't you think we ought to call on the authorities? We need help. Now, wait just a minute. We've been taking care of our own business too long to go running to outsiders for help. This whole nightmare doesn't concern anyone else. We've got to deal with it. 
For God's sake, Sam. This isn't business as usual. There's been somebody killed here. What happened? A crazy girl had an accident. What was to be expected of her? She should have been in an institution a long time ago. I'm sorry, Ann. Dear God. Sorry, Ann. Well, how did she die? Hung herself, that's how. Oh, that's a damn lie, Sam, and you know it. That's so? I think the doc here can confirm what I've said. He examined her. Death was due to strangulation. All right. You do what you want. But I'll tell you something. You better lock your doors. You better not get caught alone. Because I swear to you, what Ephraim Ludlow has in store for this town is going to make what happened in this house look like a church picnic. Ah, you don't want to listen to me. Go on. Bury your heads in the sand. Pretend it doesn't exist. Fine. But don't say I didn't warn you. Because I don't want your blood on my hands. End of sermon. Short song. Right, right. Photo News, wind speaking. May I please speak with Deborah Hall? I'm sorry, she's out for the day. Any messages? Uh, no, no message. Thank you. Eternal, eternal rest. Rest. What are you mumbling about? Deborah, glad you're back. Come here. Well, I hope your afternoon was better than mine. I'm nowhere. Well, I've been doing some research on my own. How do you like them? It's a nice work. What does it mean? These, my dear, are blow-ups of an inscription on your piano. 
Interesting. Soul crime? This is what I've got so far. Walls of sound. Soul cries. Eternal rest? And the inscription's marred with scratches. Too much wear and tear. What do you make of it, though? Well, doesn't mean anything yet. I keep digging. I wish I could get a clean close-up of that thing. That would help. I went to the county seat library today. Nothing. But did you know that Ludlow is older than Westchester? Deb, if you want me to help, you're going to have to clue me in. What are you getting at? I'm not so sure I know. All right, I'll tell you what's bothering me. Ephraim Ludlow was booted out of this town after he settled here and built a community. With him, he took all his possessions, including that piano. 185 years later, he sends it back. He's getting kind of old by now, isn't he? All right, so his family, uh, his deceased grandson sends it back. Why? Maybe they wanted to get it tuned. All right, I don't know why. That's what's bothering me. Judging from the stories I heard, uh, there were a lot of ill feelings between Ludlow and the townsfolk. There were brutal killings, witch burnings, tales of vampires. <sighs> so why would even his family, who must have heard of the goings-on, send a gift to a town that was nothing but trouble for them? They forgot and forgave. No, no, I don't buy that at all. I think it was to get even. But how? Why won't anybody answer any questions about the history of Ludlow? And why are people leaving? And why is there no historical data? Oh, another thing. Ephraim Ludlow had a daughter, about 10 years old, who became very ill and died here before he left. And he blamed her death on the townspeople. I remember my grandfather telling me that story. You get it? Everybody uptight. Next thing they're gonna do is panic. And then what? Keep your voice down. Sybil's sleeping. She's under sedation. She almost became a victim this morning. A victim? Victim of what? Come on, cut the crap, Sam. Not with me, please. We all knew it was going to happen. It was only a question of time. Not all of us. Just all of you superstitious fools. Curse. Revenge. Shit. God, you must be mad, Sam. It's worse than I thought. A girl gets torn limb from limb and you treat it like nothing's happened. She was on the list of names. Shut up, Chris. No, no more. Look, the least you could do is tell the others to leave. Maybe they'd have a chance. This town is cursed. It always has been. And just what would you like me to do? You think the police would help? The FBI? The army, maybe? Do you really think that would help? I don't know. But something has to happen. Sam, listen to me. You and I are on that list. You're getting too upset. Control yourself. Pray. Why don't you? Pray. Maybe that would help.
You promised that.